So I had to think about what you guys might want to hear from me uh, in the five minutes I've got to chat to you. Um, firstly, a little bit about my background, which I've done. Um, and then I guess I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why FMCG, so my, why you might want to work in FMCG, which stands for Fast Moving Consumer Goods, in case you didn't know, I didn't know three years ago. Um, a little bit about what you might need to work in FMCG. Um, and I will talk a little bit about Emerson again, but not too much, I promise. Um, I've got to caveat this with my experience in FMCG simply being innocent. So I've interviewed people from different businesses as part of preparing for this. I had a chat with some people who sit around me who've worked at places like Unilever and P&G. So um, I can give a bit of a broad perspective, but it will probably be a bit tainted by my own personal experience of working where I work. Um, but I guess, why do you want to work in FMCG? The, the first thing that stood out for me, and I really felt this when I went to interview, was you tend to have a product that you can kind of hold in your hand and you can see what it is and you can understand what it is. And comparing that to banking, where it's still taking them two years to unwrap all the derivative swap deals that they did um, in the credit crunch, it's, it's really nice to be able to hold on to something that you can see and, and you can tell what it is. Um, and one of the, I guess one of the other things about the product is if you can see what it is, you've probably got a good idea for how it's made. And the process of making a smoothie, um, okay, it's a bit different to uh, getting the blender and sticking the fruit in, but essentially the, the core steps are the same and we've got um, we've got a procurement team, very much the same as you talked about, buyers who are the people effectively going out to the supermarket to buy the fruit. We've got an ingredients and blending team, they're the guys who put it in, put it in the mixer and whiz it up and ship it around. Um, we've got manufacturing teams who put it in the bottles, we've got sales teams who take it out to sell it, marketing teams who create a story that makes you want to buy it, uh, and an innovation team that works on new products and developing new things. Um, so all of those things hopefully are things that kind of make sense to you guys. And, um, I would hope that you'd be able to tell from those names kind of what goes on. So it was appealing to me to, to go to a business where you could sort of, you could tell what was going on. Um, and the second bit is the real diversity of roles and the different personalities you get to work with. Uh, so I, I was thinking about this. We, we recruited a lady um, in the last couple of weeks. It's an incredibly smart woman. She got the top first in her year from Cambridge. Um, an incredible engineer. She's a really smart lady, talks really fast, makes decisions really fast. And she works in our ingredients and blending team. She has to work with this guy called Atha, who is a, uh, he's an agronomist, which means he's a, a fruit technician. He's like a fruit wizard. And he, um, he, he goes out to our different suppliers and he looks at what's going on in the harvest and he kind of does a little rain dance and understands what's going on with the rain. Uh, and he's this incredible, thoughtful guy. I mean, it takes him about 30 seconds to get, well, it takes him about half an hour to get the end of the sentence. But these guys have to work really closely together and match their different styles and their different personalities to to get our drinks made. And so the different kind of roles and the different kind of personalities you come across um, are some of the other reasons you might want to work in FMCG. 
Uh, something else, similarly with retail, it, it changes fast. Businesses are always trying to differentiate themselves, to innovate, to come up with the next new big thing. Um, and the pace of change can be a bit exhausting, but for, for me, and I imagine for a lot of people in this room, it's something you probably find quite inspiring. Um, so what do you need? I guess the first thing, and you talked about this as well, I can see there are a lot of similarities between our two areas, um, is a real passion. Um, I guess a passion for the products that, that you're working with, um, but also a passion for your interaction with it, whether that's you. Um, but yeah, a passion for your interaction with it. So whether that's um, someone selling out smoothies, um, or someone like me who works in HR who never gets their hands on a piece of fruit, but, but um, gets to look after all of the people who make it. It's ultimately responsible right, for making sure it all happens. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty competitive industry. I don't know if any of you guys saw some of the crazy headlines in the papers about jobs for graduates, but it was something like 60 applicants for every FMC job, which is absolutely insane. But because it's a, a competitive industry, it means we can be quite choosy. And so people will tend to need to be smart and um, to show us the reason that they love us as a company and, and that they love our products. Um, what I'd not expected is they're really collaborative businesses. So loads of different functions doing different things. Um, but you need to be a great communicator who can make things happen across all of those different bits of the business. So, you know, if we if we make a decision that we want to run a promotion that sells lots of smoothies, lots more smoothies than we usually would, you've got to go and influence the manufacturing team and tell them that they're going to have to work slightly longer hours to make more of the drinks so that you can sell them and get more and get more cash in. And that collaborative working style is something that really stands out for me. Um, also, something that one of the guys I asked said: FMCG tends to be about really long-term relationships. So, um, you know, we sell our drinks in Tesco's, Sainsbury's, Waitrose. They're not businesses that are going anywhere soon. And so you can't uh, screw them over one year to get a good deal, only to move to a different supplier the next year. And that long-termism, if you couple it with the speed at which things is changing, things are changing to it, makes it uh, a really good place to work. So I'll do a quick caveat. Um, because like I said, my, my experience is, is not FMCG, it's Innocent. Uh, and I guess the way that Innocent differs is we're a little bit smaller than a lot of the other FMCG places. We're uh, 250 employees. We've got uh, we've got two brands, Innocent and This Water. We've got about uh, I guess three, four different kinds of products that we make. Whereas somewhere like a Unilever, a Procter and Gamble, if you go into a supermarket, they essentially half of the products you're buying are, uh, with those guys, and, and that will appeal to different people. Um, and in the places like Unilever and P&G, you tend to have a much more structured kind of career plan, grad scheme, um, set of progression, which again. Uh, will appeal to certain people. At Innocent, things tend to be a little bit more chaotic. You're much more in control of your own development. Um, we also don't tend to run big schemes. We've got a thing as well with the one that I looked after, uh, and we've not done another one since, which means we tend to recruit people who come in at kind of a second job level. So we look to bring lots of people in who, who bring some really tangible skills in with them and can bring a bit of expertise to the business. Um, so I guess that's that's it. That's a little bit about FHG. That's a little bit about Innocent. If there's anything else you'd like to know, um, Look forward to chatting to you later. Thanks.